Ambassador of Israel, I'd like to give a little bit of background. So Ambassador Dr. Mie Shlomo is born in Tel Aviv, Israel. And about the education background, he has a bachelor degree in political science from Tel Aviv University and goes on to master degrees in mass communication from Hebrew University in Jerusalem and also has a PhD in history and communication at University Paris. Um, before coming to Thailand, he is a diplomat and ambassador at the El Salvador, Peru, Denmark, India, and also the United States, where he is the Council General and Head of the Israeli Mission in Boston and Houston. He is married with Madame Braca, which we will be meeting today, and they both have one son and a daughter. They both work in the technology sector. So during this COVID situation, of course, we have to be cautious about it by wearing masks. So let's go meet the ambassador. the residence of the ambassadors of Israel, um, His Excellency Dr. Mia Shlomo and Madame Braca. Let's go meet the ambassador. Swadika. 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 Welcome. So we are here at the residence now. Come in. Well, welcome to the welcome. residence of the ambassador of Israel. Thank this is you. my wife, Bracha. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you I'm for honored. coming to visit us. I'm honored. Thank you for your time taking the interview with us. Yeah, maybe we will start with the residence tour. Then you sure. can share with us around. All right. So uh, let's start with this, the living room, which yes. uh, where we host our guests uh, that we uh, invite here uh, every mm -hmm. so often. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the end of the day, this is the main function of residence of ambassador, is to invite people and build friendship with uh, the people of Thailand that we get to know along the way. Uh, we have uh, different artifacts here that are, mm. some of them are Thai, some of them are Israelis. Oh, that you brought uh, from Israel? We have the, the, ah. the Israeli symbol of the Hanukkah, mm. which is an ancient symbol uh, referring to uh, to the Jewish state of mm. Israel 2,000 years ago, mm. uh, with the temple, etc. But, but this also... wasn't 2,000 years ago, right? No, no, <laughs> no. this is not. This is a very replica. sacred. Yes. I see. Next <laughs> and up. We also have some uh, other artifacts. You have the mm. uh, Thai seldom uh, uh, elephant. Elephants. The symbol uh, of elephant is the animal of the national animal of Thailand. Yep. And uh, uh, over there, we have uh, also from uh, Thailand. As you can see, yes. uh, these uh, gifts that we get from uh, different people, which I think are really, really uh, oh, marvelous. This is the Lata the, like the parliament um, symbol. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see. And uh, over here you would see what Bracha is collecting <laughs> from different places in the world. The nat nature. <laughs> well, this is, this is Thai, no, what is that? actually. I don't know. I where this is from Kolipe. Kolipe, oh. it just oh, dropped Kolipe. from the tree green oh, and what? then it stayed on the ground for I don't know how oh, long because so they cool. had also dry ones. I see. So I bring them. And then I find this mushroom Mushrooms. that grows oh. here. It was soft from, from the sea water and then it just got dry and it's beautiful. So I collect these uh, in nature weird things that I find. <laughs> so Maybe, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is this is very nice. I like those yeah. um, from yeah, nature. Yeah. the book about King Rama the Nine mm. that you, yep. as you can see, King, King Pumipon. Pumipon. Yes. Yep. And the, the key to the city of Bangkok. Oh, we have a door for that as well? <laughs> well, the door, the door is coming, but the key oh, is Oh, okay, it's first, and then the door is later. <laughs> yes. I see. And over here you have uh, two paintings mm. uh, that we are Abstract. very proud mm. that were painted by uh, our uh, Bracha sister. Yeah. Oh. She's a painter. Wow. She's a painter. And there's another one over there so, that she did. Yeah. So uh, I, I uh, she was very generous to give it to me, mm. and uh, I promised it will have a mm. very have good place. So, so this is the area. Wow, there's um, 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 snacks and right. Food These are the this snacks and uh, yeah. that we will have to work with later on. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, how we entertain. Usually, uh, when we entertain uh, a guest, we try to do some Israeli food, of course. 
Yes. Uh, this is for morning time, so it's I not see. so Israeli, but uh, uh, usually we try to do Israeli hummus? food. Hummus, yes. Hummus, hummus, hummus. yeah. And uh, maybe yeah, we should up. move... Uh, yeah. And uh, this is uh, actually what we are very proud of, the books. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also... Uh, you cannot read it because they are all in Hebrew. Hebrew. <laughs> some are, uh, some in English. But uh, we are avid... Uh, oh, I both. read this one. It's good. Which one? Zion's Dilemma. Really? Really? Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's good. Okay, I know the author or the person. Really? He's, uh, yeah, yeah, he's Can I friend. get the signature? <laughs> oh, of course. I think he actually. Oh. No, he did not. Say, maybe he did he's a doctor it, too, right? Because yeah, I yeah, yeah, I remember but, correctly. Uh, no, he did not sign this one. Yeah, sure. This is actually a picture of Bracha's family. Oh, you have uh, a big family. The, yeah, wow. yeah. And uh, this is a picture we like very much. Mm -hmm. This is. I call him a father. Salman Rushdie. Uh, Salman Rushdie, the writer. Ah, the writer. Salman Rushdie is here, and we are having a lunch with him in in uh, in Boston. Oh, uh, uh, this was. We are very young and uh, nineteen. More beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is the uh, this is the Pakistani consul. Oh, Pakistani and, uh, consul, which is interesting the because honorary consul. Honorary consul, honorary consul yeah. Honorary. And uh, you won't be able to read, but all these books, for example, all yeah, of them are about the Holocaust. Ah, yeah, I see, all of them. I see. This is a, a subject that uh, I'm very interested in. Is it uh, from the um, family members' perspective, or is it more no, of no, like no, it's history, uh, history, history yeah. and uh, also experiences? Photography, and yeah. my family uh, mm -hmm. had experience in, in the Holocaust. They came from oh. Poland. Oh, so yeah, they they How were so? uh, during uh, the war in I in see. Poland. I see. And uh, this is mostly about Jewish philosophy. That's uh, Bracha's uh, part of the. And this, by the way, is the book of the Shai Agnon, who is a Nobel laureate. Oh, the other one. Yes, yeah. and uh, you can see that there's like eight we of them. We have a whole down series. There. I see. Um, but uh, yeah. that's a very very important Israeli writer. Um, and I think that's about it. That's a famous picture that, uh, it's a famous photo actually. Right? He's picture. moving her? It's, it's, it's kind of uh, a <laughs> scene of the Italy street in the, uh, oh, okay. it's called American Italy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Ruth Orkin is the photographer. Uh, and it's a, uh, uh, in the States it's like a very, it. very famous picture. She it's actually a stage, it's not a real picture. Right, right, right. We read about it after we bought it. It's, right. it's a very interesting history. Yeah. It, it looks staged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah, staged, it yeah, looks yeah. like it's very cinematic, yeah. you know, like, uh, like... It can be real life when true, you... True, yeah, true, true. especially... And uh, let's move, let's move right. to the dining room, maybe. Okay, dining room. So that's the dining room. Uh, we can sit here 14 people uh, at the dinner. And you know, dinners is one of the main uh, activities activities of diplomats because yes. it's a very good way to uh, mm. to break the ice and to bond and to bond and work. to have like a good conversation mm. and to build relationship. Mm. Diplomacy in the end of the day is all about building relationship. relationships. Agreed, so, agreed, agreed. So uh, it's a very pleasant way to get to know people, mm -hmm. and people are always happy to come to houses of ambassadors because. They like to try the local food, whatever. Oh, yes, yes. So in our case, it's the Israeli food. And, uh, and you Israeli have an Israeli wine. wine we Israeli wine also. And you have Israeli um, chefs from no. Israel? No. Oh, oh, okay. But Bracha, but Bracha has trained the, our chef. Oh, she is the Israeli chef. Food. She's the designated Bracha, chef. Bracha is a very good chef, but she refused to cook. <laughs> Maybe we should move to the next. Uh, you want to go in front of me? This is a very, very famous Israeli artist mm. called uh, Nachum Gutman. Mm -hmm. uh, he mainly painted scenes of Tel Aviv. I uh, see. This is in Tel Aviv? It's yeah. in Tel Aviv, ah. but you know, Tel Aviv was the first neighborhood was uh, Neve Tzedek, the really stone houses they still build there, very narrow streets. I see, I see. And it looks. Uh, this looks like a marketplace to me. Yeah, like it's a, like yeah. a, a bit. Uh, yeah. You can see this Jewish traditional Orthodox Jews who are. Oh, oh wearing the gowns. Yeah, and exactly. Oh, yeah, the black uh, and uh, anyway, let's go up. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's uh, 
That's a very, this is actually a, a very uh, nice photo of Tel Aviv. And it looks like a picture, but it's a photo, actually. It's a photo? It is, yeah. Oh. It's a photo. It's not a painting, it's a photo. Uh, it's I think a, it was taken in Jaffa. This is Jaffa, yeah. Oh, this, Jaffa. Is, uh, this is Tel Aviv, see? And uh, oh. like a lot of sun. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we love Tel Aviv. Famous. Um, and here you can see the, also uh, yeah. It's also Tel Aviv an Israeli artist. Yeah. That's Israeli also. It's kind of neat. Uh, you can take a peek to my office, although it's not organized, but it's okay. Oh, it's so, pop-up as well. It's a pop-up, yeah. Ah. It's like it's 3D. 3D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Should I? Okay. So this is the, the office. Uh, in our business, uh, you don't really get to go home and uh, mm. forget all the work. You have to work like 24-7. And these days with the technology, it's very, very easy. Mm. So I have my laptop over there. So you work from and, home. Uh, <laughs> and we work from home because yeah. of the time difference with Israel is five. Israel, oh yeah, how long? We are five hours ahead of here of Israel. Okay. So okay. when we finish our day, they are only start the day. I see. So a lot of times you would, uh, you would. Uh, are you finishing? But then yeah, the day yeah, would be you, st you still have to keep working. I see. Um, this is, by the way, a very famous uh, oh. uh, reproduction of, uh, of the first mm. uh, black, American black girl mm. uh, going to integration school in Arkansas. Oh, That, that is the, when they started the integration school in I the see, I see. United wow. States. And mm. the first school mm. that uh, you see the federal marshals are going with her. Oh, to I the see. to the school, I see. because uh, this was the beginning of the integration. I see, I see. Uh, in American school of uh, mm -hmm. during that Black period. Africans, yes, I see. and uh, I got it as a present for my staff in the consulate in Boston. Mm. They bought it as a farewell present for me. That's a very impactful. It is, yeah, it is. Photo, and I yeah. know that we cared a lot about these issues mm -hmm. in general, mm. and it's Norman Rockwell. It's the name of the. I know. You oh, know, this is a, yes. This, this is, is a, normal work. Yeah. This is I mean, a real it's, one? This is a reproduction. But oh, it's a reproduction, okay. It's a, it's a little is, rough. It should be in a museum. No, no, <laughs> it, was a, it was an original. Uh, <laughs> by the way, when I was in the yeah. in the consulate in Texas, yeah, yeah. Uh, Arkansas was under my jurisdiction, um, and I actually went to the school to visit it. The to school. the actual yeah, school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I went to the school to visit it because it was, mm -hmm. I already had this picture and I knew the history. Mm -hmm. So uh, one meaningful. of my visits, mm -hmm. I asked uh, and I went to the school in the office to visit it. Very, very, mm -hmm. very interesting place. Mm -hmm. It's a public school? It's a know? public school, yeah. It's a regular public school. Lot. All right, we can go to the next level here. Yeah. We have a few other Israeli, Israeli artists. Israeli art. In Tel Aviv or? No, this is not Tel Aviv. This will be... Um, a village. Oh, yeah, okay. This would be a village community or something. And, uh, That's like the scenery of when you drive through Israel. Oh, through Israel, you'll see these are the, yep. you know. Uh, we have here the swimming pool, which is uh, wonderful to have. It's summer all year long in yeah. Thailand, summer so all year long. enjoy yeah, definitely. the pool. So we have a nice swimming pool. Yeah. It was very handy, especially during COVID time, mm. when all the swimming pools were closed. We could still take a, a bath here uh, and swim in the swimming pool. And we have a gym, a little gym over there that Bracha mm -hmm. is using very much and I'm not using at all. <laughs> and uh, here we also do receptions, not that, man, not that many receptions, mm -hmm. because most of the time it's either raining or too hot. Mm -hmm. but uh, but we do small dinners here or small uh, like breakfast or stuff like that. Yeah. We are lucky that we don't have uh, high buildings just in front of us. Yes. So you have a little bit of space. Yeah, you have whole of Bangkok yes. actually spread and both I'm trying sides. to find Satron. <laughs> Where is Satron? That one yeah. is the mid. Yeah, the problem is the haze. It's, uh... Uh -huh. Ah, there, there, there. there. Oh, the two, the, uh, domes, yeah. the two domes, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. 
So we uh, during uh, the New Year Eve we always here we watch the fireworks from here. Oh, okay. It's very easy. You can see from both sides from the. Yeah. the we can see world. from here and, and from the egg there. From the yam. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yes, so thank you for taking us on a tour. And next up would be gift giving session. Please stay tuned. Okay. So welcome back from the residence tour. Uh, we are starting out with the gift giving session as a cultural exchange for the ambassador to learn more about Thailand through this gift. So since your excellency, your favorite hobby is to travel, 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 travel. <laughs> um, so we present you with this, which is the Map of Thailand. Oh, yes. So good. could you mind holding on sure. this a little bit? Yes. So yes, you can look at this geography. You might find some province that you have been previously with Madame. Uh, maybe yeah, you can let us know where where you went. Well, let's previously. start from the south. Yeah, right? the south. Yeah. Okay. So we've been here in Kolipe. Uh, uh, oh, oh, Kolipe. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We've been in Trang. Trang. In Komuk. Which is a somewhere yeah, here. Yeah, Tang, yes. Uh, we've been in Akonsi Tamarat. I see, I see. We've been in... Uh, Phuket, of course. <laughs> in Phuket, of course. Yeah. We've been to Krabi. Krabi. We've been to Suratani. Oh, so mostly all from the south. Koh Samui, oh, wow, wow. Koh Pangang. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, Pangnaga we've been a couple of times. Ah, Pangnaga. Yeah, a few yeah. times we've been yeah. in Pangnaga. And up uh, in the middle, maybe you went to somewhere Well, if we center? start, sure, we start, let's see, where's Chiang Mai? Chiang Mai, oh, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai. Yep. Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, mm -hmm. Meong Song, we've Meong been. Meong Song. Sukhothai, of course. Sukhothai. Pai. Uh, Pai. Pai. Oh, yeah, Pai, Pai. Pai is on the way yeah. from here to here. Yeah, I see, like I see. Uh, Sukhothai, we've been. Or like Gansunapuri. Uh, Udon Tani. Yeah, yeah. Udon is... Udon Tani? No, this is not Udon Tani. Yes, Udon. Udon is here. Yeah, Udon yeah, Tani Udon here. They have very really uh, delicious lab. <laughs> like Thai salad. Yeah. Well, um, so while you're taking... Um, you can take a quick look on here first okay. because our next team, we will transfer to the jigsaw map, which we have this. Ooh. Which is little, <laughs> which is little piece of um, um, Thailand map. So here, uh -huh. if you can spot like, um, oh, this is Chiang Rai, so it's in the north. Right. So we have a total of five pieces, like um, representing each uh, main region of Thailand, which is um, the northern part, right. the central part, right. the eastern part, right. um, the northeastern part, which is Isan part, right. and also the southern part that um, you've been to. So we have the board back here. Now we're going to give you two minutes because I did it under 30 seconds, so you can do it under two minutes. And, um, and, and also Madame can help. Okay, go. Two minutes. All right. Three. So, turn right. I fell down. Alright. That's it. They'll come. Yeah, okay. Now we need to move this to fit. Oh. Okay. Yep, it fits perfectly. Yep, correct. Oops, oops, oops. Okay. What are we doing in time? One minute left. One minute left. Quickly. Yeah. Oh, we have to fight with this stick. Yeah, the, te <laughs> the technical thing is not. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. no, no. 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 What is this? Yeah, Yeah, Like this. Yep, that's right. Uh, no, this one is wrong. No, this one is wrong. This one It fits like perfectly under... Oh, so it's sort of down here? Yeah. Down, yeah. down. It's actually here. Yeah. It's at small. Really? Under. No. No. This is what? No. Yeah. The constant yeah. right is here. So it's after this. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 10, Where 9, is the last 8, one? 7, 6, 5. Alright. Thailand. Just in time. 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 Just in
second time. What? <laughs> Yay. Tell the second without all this gum. <laughs> yeah, so if, if without the gum, then you yeah, probably yeah. finish the one minute. The technical challenge was... Yeah, yeah, blame the gum. Blame, blame the gum. Blame. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, and that is all for the for the gift giving part. And then the next up part would be game time. Stay tuned. So wrapping up with the gift giving, now we are starting out with the game. So let's play. The game we have today is the 10 seconds game. I'm going to read out the cultural questions about Israel and the person who hits this bell first needs to answer the questions within 10 seconds. And we have our little iPad there to time for 10 seconds. Um, if you cannot answer the questions correctly, then the other person then gets 10 seconds to answer it. And, and they have to answer it correctly, of course. Yeah. So yes, are you ready? <laughs> Who's gonna win this time? Well, what is the first answer? <laughs> I actually don't have the answer here, sorry. <laughs> you have to verify it. Okay, so let's start. The first question is, what are the three main languages spoken in Israel? Go! 10 seconds. Hebrew, English, Arabic. Okay, yes. She really? got the point. Okay. Yeah. So the, the most um, three primary languages in Israel is Hebrew, Arabic, um, English and Russian is about the same, so... so Russian, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we give... Yeah, um, Russian, um, yeah, but English will be, even for the Russians, the, the mm. business language if they want to go mm. to serious business or high-tech or whatever. I see, I see. So, so, so they maybe, will switch to English. I see. So maybe, like, uh, share with the audience um, on, you know, the, the, the main language there, and then, you know, mostly people speak Hebrew there, or the percentage, and well, mostly also... mostly Hebrew. School is in Hebrew. I uh, see. Even if you come from another country and mm. you uh, speak another language at home, mm. or you you read another language, like for cultural, uh, uh, so you will need to um, to, uh, to, to speak to the, Hebrew, to Hebrew. Uh, quite fluently mm. to to manage uh, mm. in mm. Israel. Mm. Yeah. Now, like speaking of languages, let's do a little language exchange session. So I'm gonna <coughs> say some. Difficult Thai words that foreigners find it difficult to pronounce. Um, and you can repeat after I said the, the, the word. Um, so the first one, let's start with the easy one first. It's angun. Angun. Yes, you got it. Angun. Angun. Yeah, angun. Mo yeah, most of the foreigners, it's hard to pronounce the ng sound. Mm. Angun. It means grape in Thai. Oh. So what? Grape? Right. Grapes. Yeah. So you can order grapes at the market. Yeah. Angun, okay. angun, angun, angun. angun. <laughs> Okay, the next one, this is um, four words. It's like, it plays with the tone. So oh. it's ma 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 ha ma. Ma 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 ma. Yeah, you got it. Ma ma. Ma 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 ha ma. Ma, yes. So it means um, mom comes to see the dog. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't think I need oh to use it. <laughs> yeah, if you if you use it uh, uh, wrongly, it, will, it can be like the the dog come to the mom or, or the mom like. Yeah. I can do. I yeah, can yeah. live with that. Mama, mama, mama. Um, this is the last one. The hardest one is, yai kim lam yai, nam lai yai lai yoi. So you can start. <laughs> <laughs> you can start. Yai kim lam yai. Again? Yai kim lam yai. Yai kim lam yai. Yes. Yai kim lam yai. Nam lai yai. Nam lai yai. Lai yoi. Yai yoi. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she got it right. So it How means it's like a tongue it? twister. So um yai kim lam yai is like grandma eats the long gang. And oh. then nam lai yai lai yoi means her um saliva drips down. So it's just like yai kim lam yai nam lai yai lai yoi. I can also do my pen. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's about it. Um, do you have something like this in Hebrew? Uh, that is hard to say. Sure. You want to do it? Yes. Okay. Ganan gidel dagan bagan dagan gadul gadal bagan. Can you say it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say it slowly? Ganan gidel dagan bagan dagan gadul gadal bagan. Ganan digel gadan gaban. It's well, in hard, well. It's a, it's a well played because all of this sounds the uh. same, but it's a, the gardener uh, planted a vegetable, some kind of vegetable uh. in the garden. Yeah. Wheat. Yeah. And wheat. Yeah. And wheat. And a big garden. wheat grew in the garden. Ah, uh, you go Gidel Dagan Bagan. Gidel Dagan Bagan. Gidel Dagan Bagan. Dagan Gadol. Dagan Gadol. Gadal Bagan. 
กันดาวบากันโอเค so we want to teach the audience a little bit on Hebrew slang so um, there's several that I have here but feel free to to share more so the first word is sababa means um, Okay. It's almost like sabai sabai. Sabai, right? Sababa. Sabai sababa uh -uh. sababa sabai. Yeah. Sababa. So, so you can just say to your friend like, sababa sababa. Sababa is like cool, sababa. you know. No, ah. Oh, um, if you ask to do something, you say sababa. It means okay, I understand. Uh -huh. I'll do it. Don't worry. It's oh, like in okay. one word. And no problem. Okay, no problem. Oh, no problem. Ah, okay. Then next up is yala. Yala, yeah. Means. Yala means get, mo get moving. <laughs> <laughs> get moving. Let's get go. Yala. Let's go, yeah. Uh, so yala to yala. To the, the yala to yala. To yala. To yeah. <laughs> and last one is Havlaz. Havlaz Yeah, Havlaz Yeah, yeah. Well, Havlaz short is Havlaz. Havlaz. That's it's the initials. Hav it's Havlaz Azman. Havlaz. Yeah, instead of saying Havlaz Azman, it's like Havlaz. Ah, ah, like short. The short version. Ah, and what does it mean? Well, uh, it's it's something is so good, so it's a waste of time even talking about it or saying yeah, how nice it is. I don't understand the concept. Like it's waste yeah. of time, but it's, it's a waste good. Of time. Like why? Like <laughs> yeah. You see, that's that's a good one because yeah. you used to, the real meaning of Chaval al mm. is that don't waste your time. Don't on waste it. your time on it. But it ah. became like the opposite. Chaval al became like. Don't, it's it's so good. Oh, it's you know, so good. Don't, don't even, even, don't even, don't don't even mention ah, it. how good okay. it is. It's oh, like, it's, a, like it's a waste of time yeah. uh, saying that it's good. Yeah. I see. Because so, it, it shows. I see. So, so if you really want to say Chaval yeah. al-Azman, that don't waste your time on it, you have to say Chaval al-Azman in the old meaning. What is the, the old, old meaning? Uh, the old the meaning old is that regular meaning that uh -huh. don't waste your time on it. It's bad. Ah, I see, I but see. The but the new is, is don't even good. speak about okay. it. It's so good. It's so good. Don't waste your ah. time. Yeah, that's why I picked this <laughs> like, one because like logically this, it just, it just take, yeah, know, yeah. It's yeah. The, yeah. Like this stick your ice mango is great. Uh, how was mine? Ah, okay, I see. Okay, um, moving on to the next question. Um, so this question, when I say go, you can just start hitting the time ready. List out three important dates in Israel that start with the word Yom. The word what? Yom. Like Yom Kippur, Yom, Yom, Yom. Atzmaut, Yom Hashoah. I told you she never got it. Got it in like three <laughs> seconds. I don't think we need timer. Okay, so yes, yeah, so please give a little bit of um, um, what Yom Kippur is and um, Yom Hasmut. Yeah. And what is the other one? Yom Hashoah. Yom Hashoah. Yom Hashoah. The Holocaust, Holocaust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe give a little bit on, on each. Uh, well, Yom Kippur is mm -hmm. uh, the day of uh, fasting. It's mm. very religious mm. in, in, in the Israeli, like in the Jewish religion. Mm. It's the most uh, like sacred mm. day. And for 25 hours, you have to fast you and you, fast. you cannot wash. You cannot. From Yom Kippur Eve to yeah. uh, 24 hours, mm. you don't wash, you mm. don't uh, drink or eat. Yeah, and then you, you don't and work? Oh, don't, I love that. You, you don't, don't work. work of course, <laughs> you know. And in Israel, it's a very special day because there's no traffic at all. Nothing. Oh, nothing so at it's all. the day that the it's whole all streets all are quiet. And, you know, silent. Mm, I see. And, well, religious people would go to a um, synagogue and spend the day there. Mm. Um, non religious also tend to fast because of their tradition. Mm. And they might stay at home or go out, you know, walk with the children on, mm. in the empty streets. It's perfect during COVID yeah. because not many yeah. people. Are. And we have already lockdown. locked down. Yes. Yeah. Last few years we have the children's tradition who yeah. go out in with their bikes oh. to the highways uh -huh. and just bike along. Because oh, it's safe. Cute. No yeah, 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 it's safe, no cars. No cars. So see. all the big highways uh. are full of children on their bikes, on their I little see. bikes. I see. So you, you have different traditions. You That's have the cute. religious, you have the and non-religious mm -hmm. in different way, but it's a special mm -hmm. day. I see. Israel. And then Yom Hafsmut is uh, the Independence, Independence Day, day. Um, which is celebrated on the fifth of the year, the yeah yeah, 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 which is Hebrew calendar. Yeah, Hebrew calendar. Yeah. Hebrew calendar. Hey, yeah. yeah. hey, and yeah. that's why every year it's a different mm. kind of date in the general calendar mm. because it follows the Hebrew so, calendar. So so you have to to count yeah. which day. And lastly is um. Yom Hashem. That's why, that's why when they ask me as an ambassador sometimes, when is Yom Hashem? Mm. Independence Day. Mm. And I don't really know because 
It changes every year. Right? Yeah, so yeah. You have to check, check. Have to check the. What kind of thing? Also, it doesn't know. Every year happen. you have a it different date. Yeah. That's why the question I ask is, what date is Yom Kippur? At first, we would use this one, but right. of course, it's a different date. Different like, date, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the Hebrew. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And lastly, is Yom Hash Hashua is. Um, yeah. well, it's the commemoration date of uh, the Jewish people in Europe uh, mainly, that, mm -hmm. but not only that mm -hmm. perished uh, and was were. Mm. Um, um, killed, murdered uh, mm. during the Nazi uh, the occupation mm. uh, of Europe, mm -hmm. uh, in Germany and, and all over Europe. Mm. Right? Next questions. Hit it when I say go. Time ready. No! <laughs> <laughs> Not go this ready. time. That's not <laughs> what is the question? <laughs> okay, list out three popular dishes in Israel. Go. Popular what? Dish. Oh, dish. Dishes, okay. Shakshuka. Uh, quickly, quickly. Borekas and hummus. Uh, okay. So you mentioned hummus, yeah. which is, um, well, well, like Americans hummus, say it's hummus, hummus, but yeah, hummus, yeah, 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 hummus. Made but, of uh, the chickpea dips and right, then the other right. ones. And uh, you eat it with a lot of pita bread. Yes, and That's falafel. That's important. Too. Yes. And you eat it with your hands. You don't eat it with a It's weird if you, fork. yeah, it, it's. You just dip it with your hand. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I've never seen anyone eat it with fork and knives, but I think uh, it's nat na natural. People, usually people look at it and don't know what to do with it. But <laughs> if you're in Israel, you eat it and everywhere in the Middle East, actually. You eat it in mm -hmm. your hands. Your hands. Shakshuka is kind of a... Shakshuka. Eggs? A, actually, you have it here in some Thai restaurants. Oh, really? Yes, oh, some of them, okay. not too many of them, but it's uh, eggs, okay. eggs that are cooked with... Uh, with um well he knows what to how to I know eat how he to doesn't eat know it. how I to prepare to it. I see. <laughs> so <laughs> I tell you I tell you how to prepare I see I see okay, <laughs> Bra, you tell okay. Her okay. your your turn your turn pass it to me. well you have vegetables onion garlic she wins she wins she wins and a lot of uh, uh, tomatoes <laughs> and some chili uh -huh. and eggs on it and yeah. it cooks together very nice the main uh, ingredient is eggs, right? Like egg pouch, and tomato. eggs, eggs and tomato. Uh, uh, and the other one that you mentioned was burakas. Burakas. Burakas is kind of okay. Oh, it's a meat, right? In no, it's thin it's, it's dough? pastry like a, a leafy pastry. Oh, like, like filled thin? with the, yeah, uh, a cheese or mm. a, a other like potatoes mm. or. Um, I see. So whichever like ingredients you can whichever use to fill, fill yeah. in. Yeah. I can show you how to eat all these dishes. <laughs> yes, yes. I would love to learn how to and eat this traditionally, dish. Traditionally, it's like a Balkan mm -hmm. uh, ah, dish. I see. I so it's, uh, all these dishes are brought from, you know. I yeah. see. You know, of course, hummus and, and uh, it, it's local mm. Israeli, mm. local to the region. But um, this is uh, the Balkan and you drink it with a yogurt drink. Yeah. Oh, you drink yeah. it with yogurt? You eat like, this and the yogurt, yogurt drink goes oh, with this. So interesting. There are markets in Israel where you go and uh. still, you know, the old, it goes from in, in the family to have these little yes. places where yes. they bake it. It's yes. baked and they have the yogurt. Oh, right cake. next to it and then you just yeah, eat. And, oh. yeah. and then egg. And you get the yogurt drink. And then egg. And then egg, yeah. Oh. So the, especially egg, it goes with the spinach. Not there are brown uh, ones uh -huh. uh, filled with spinach mm -hmm. and they... Hard the, boiled eggs. The eggs are like the Chinese eggs, you know, the brown ones? Yes. Kai yeah. right? Like yeah, the, the yeah, boiled... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I see in you. Oh, one last question on this. Um, so the question is, list out three startups name developed in Israel. Three what? Startups. 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 Oh, ten seconds. Uh, Waze, Mobileye... One more, three, two... One, pass, next 10 seconds. <laughs> 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 three, oh my god, blank. <laughs> Eight, quickly, 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 quickly. <laughs> Where's Bobby the knife? <laughs> no, no one gets a point on this one. <laughs> Two out of three. Where's Bobby lie? I'll be like, no, what's the other one? Together we have four. <laughs> no, that's not right. <laughs> so maybe like crop X or like, you know, agricultural, um, um, Oh, many, but of course, the most famous one is Waze, um, the mobile map mapping app. And then maybe you can tell what is Mobileye. Maybe we don't use um, it here. Well, uh, Mobileye is a technology mounted on cars. Oh, okay. That, uh, it's like very, uh, it's, it's cameras mounted front and back and, and sides. Mm -hmm. 
and um, it prevents you from a collision mm -hmm. or going sideways to a ditch or it's oh, like... Also more like a... It's basically uh, the technology of a self-driving car. Yeah, I was going to ask that if so, it's safe. It goes, yeah. in next generation, it uh -huh. will be on a safe driving car that's it's developed by many uh, car yeah. makers. If but the special thing with the Mobileye yeah. is that you have cameras, you know, when you reverse or yeah. whatever you have. Yeah. But the Mobileye uh, managed to uh, have a, a processing system that is uh -huh. processing it so fast that it's almost real time, almost like your eye. Oh, like exactly, like by the second. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. Actually, if you go on the YouTube, you will be able to find a Mobileye mm. demonstration video mm. of a car that is driven without a driver with a Mobileye mm. uh, technology. Oh, to see, to see the well, technology. Well, don't watch it because it's very... Dizzy? No, I oh. don't like it because it shows oh. a hysteric woman inside. No, oh, no! So, no, no, no it's awful. We, we, I saw this. There's okay, one okay, I, I believe you. No. The, a woman okay. sitting oh, and the again. car is driving and she goes, wah, wah, wah. No, no I don't. Okay, also, I will believe you. Also, USB, USB <laughs> or flash drive or disk on key, whatever you call it. USB. That's Israeli technology. Oh, it started in, in Israel? Yeah. Well, you should... Say it. It's, it's, I was, I was, maybe, it okay, next, like, next, next, maybe next week or something, we can come back on this. Oh, um, one last question. This is um, uh, questions about Thailand. Just a bonus question. Uh -huh. So whoever gets this wins the game. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. List the countries that previously colonized Thailand. No country colonized country. Yes, correct. Yeah. That's a trick question. <laughs> Okay, right. te technically she won by point, but okay. Okay, so... I was, I was lucky. <laughs> Next up will be Q&A with the ambassador. Um, we will be right back. Thank you. Thank you, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Wrapping up with the final part of Q&A. So for this Q&A session, the questions are the selected questions from a variety of groups. There are, you know, Thai who has been to Israel, um, expats living in Thailand, questions coming in from Facebook and Twitter directing to Your Excellency. Mm -hmm. And they are all asked one question. What is one question would you like to ask the ambassador of Israel? Um, but firstly, before answering the question, um, please share your background to our audience on your path in becoming an ambassador, which posting you've been to and so on. Well, I, uh, I started uh, my career as a diplomat uh, 40 years ago. Uh, after graduating from university, I joined the cadet course mm. of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which took about two years. And after two years, uh, if you pass the exams, then you're accepted uh, as a tenured diplomat. Mm. And ever since, we never looked back. We traveled the world and uh, worked in uh, uh, different countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, both my wife and myself are extremely pleased that we are now in Thailand. And you were based in five other countries before Thailand, Indeed. which was like the El Salvador, Peru, Denmark. Um, India is the first Asia country, right, right that you right, were based. Right. I was going to say if Thailand would welcome US, but yeah, sadly, you were in <laughs> India first, so <laughs> yes. okay, Southeast Asia. <laughs> oh, yes, Southeast Asia. Yeah, yeah right. that would do, that would do. And you were a council. Um, general in Boston and also Texas in the right. United States. So you're right. quite familiar um, in the North America. Um, so the first question now directing to you is, what does being Israeli means to you? And how does your career as a diplomat shape the definition of being Israeli? Well, I think the main thing that uh, I like about the, if, if I can say the Israeli DNA, mm. is that we are very good in improvising. Uh, we are not uh, deterred by uh, getting into crisis situations mm. or situations where you have to come up independently with solutions. So mm. um, this is a very Israeli thing. Uh, mm. Comes out of the fact that Israel has been a country that was mm. surrounded by enemies mm. uh, at least for the first 40, 50 years of its existence. Mm. And uh, for us, uh, we always had to come up with a solution to every problem that we had, it was a matter of survival. So Israelis mm. are, I would say, almost conditioned to be uh, good in quick, crisis quick situations, well. very quick. Mm -hmm. uh, but not only very quick, also taking the right decisions. Right, so, right. So, so 
think, think truly and then, and then yeah. act, act upon, exactly. act upon the, the so, mission. And I think, of course, this, mm. this has to do a lot with my, my career as a diplomat, because as a diplomat, mm. a lot of time you have to, uh, to figure out what to do in conditions that, are, that have uncertainty into them. Yeah. And uh, there's no time to call your uh, head office and say, okay, whatever yeah, you want to do. Next, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's time. you, you're outside in the country, mm. and uh, if you're the ambassador, then mm. uh, the buck stops with you, so to speak. And, mm. So uh, you have the right to make a decision. Exactly, and you have to, mm. to make a decision to mm. find the right answer, to find mm. the right question, whatever mm. it is. Mm. So that's, that's very connected. Mm. And also a very unique point as the ambassador. As I've been interviewing on the ambassadors. Mm -hmm. um, they basically just said um, um, what you mentioned that they learn more and more about their countries from other people's other countries that they are posting to. Right, so right. it's a very unique point it of is, view. It is. Whether they're it is. It's always interesting to see mm. how you are reflected by other people because mm. usually people are very ethnocentric, all of us. Mm -hmm. And Agreed. Uh, sometimes you are surprised that people look at you and see something else right. totally different. And mm -hmm. that's, that's educating, I would say. Yes, yes. Sometimes for the better, too. sometimes for the worse. <laughs> yeah, and also um, tying on to that, um, you said that Israel is um, a quick thinker and also as thorough and um, um, acting upon each mission um, or each task. Mm -hmm. So tying that on the economy. So now I'd like to share a little bit on Israel economy. So Israel economy is number two in the Middle East and UN's Human Development Index places Israel in the category of highly developed. Um, so which is scored by how productively a country use the resource, mm -hmm. um, available resource in the country. So the prosperity of Israel's um, advanced economy allows the country to have, you know, so sophisticated welfare system, um, modern infrastructure, and you know, high technology sector. Um, so the question on economy is, what cause? What is the cause of Israel rapidly growing economy? Um, maybe you can speak of, you know, the policy that is different from mm -hmm. neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, actually, the point uh, of Israel, uh, when you mentioned resources, is that we actually have no resources. We don't yes, have any exactly. natural resources. Human. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the only, uh, the only option, the only avenue for us was to use the real only resource we have, which is our brains. Humans, so, yeah. Uh, so Israel has been developing mm. uh, a, a, what we call innovation-based economy. Mm. Uh, we are not producing too many hardware stuff like that. Right. Uh, if you look at the high tech, for example, in Israel, which is almost half of the Israeli software, export. Right? Uh, I see. It's, it's all of it is software. We don't, mm. we don't do hardware. We don't mm. produce computer. We mm. don't uh, produce mm. uh, microchips, but we do develop the microchips. Right, R&D. Intel has mm. one of the biggest uh, outlets in Israel. Yeah. I see. So, uh, the fact that we had no resources, we really had to fight and see what can we do without natural resources mm. that mm. usually country have. Mm. And, uh, and this became uh, also very adaptive to the economy in the 21st century. Mm. Because in the 21st century, it's not anymore about land mm. or, or natural resources. Mm. They are second, I would say, by now. It's mm. about technology, it's about information, it's mm. about uh, uh, and, and we were already there when it actually hit the world as yes, a global yes, phenomenon. Yes, yes, exactly. So we had only to grow. We were all, right. already there in this. Right, right. And this is the secret of Israel. Uh, we mm -hmm. are already almost $40,000 uh, income per, per capita, which mm, is uh, right. one of the pretty highest. high. Mm, one of the highest. And, uh, and, and it's only going up and up. Mm. And I agree in terms of aggregating information and that also as from Thailand, Thailand is big in agriculture sector. So we learn a lot from you as well um, as we exchange experts, especially in the, the drip, water dripping right, technology. Right, I think right, that is very, right, very right. clever. Well, you know, Israel, when, when Israel was re, when it re established in 1948, mm. uh, in the first decade, Israel, 30, 30, one third of the labor Mm. was working in agriculture, like Thailand, oh, actually. I see, I see. But we moved, and nowadays only 3% of 
Oh, I see. Uh, I see. Of the population works in agriculture, and we produce more the, uh, than we used to produce with the third. Does it? Wow. And I see. Uh, so uh, yeah. this is the gap mm. is actually technology. Mm. You put the technology allows you to put people out of, mm. and put them in other sectors like mm. high tech. Or and having like no the know hows and all. Yeah. I was actually very surprised. Um, Um, actually, the, one of the very first thing about Israel when I learned during middle school and so on was that um, you you can produce this much crop with it, but then your geography is not very catered for That's planting true. crops. So That's I was true. so amazed in that. Um, yeah, moving on. So this year we celebrate 67 years of diplomatic relations between Israel and Thailand. Maybe you can correct me in the numbers. No, if Yeah. Since 1954, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and, the, and the embassy opening was four years after that, which is in 1958. Um, so, question on trade: What is the main import-export sector? Well, you've touched a little bit on like human resources, but maybe on on goods now, import-export sectors between our country, um, and then maybe talk a little bit on the future trends on the next 10 years. What Thai mm -hmm. investors can, you know, keep an eye on, right. vice versa. So. The, the main two uh, things that we export to Thailand is actually uh, agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, mostly know-how uh, yeah. in agriculture, yeah. and of course high tech. High tech, yeah. That's the, the two uh, biggest sectors of what... Uh, mm. And I think it goes very well with uh, Thailand because Thailand has a, a large agriculture sector yes. that mm -hmm. needs this kind of know-how. Mm. And also Thailand has the 4.0 Uh, right, digital plan. economy, right. yes, yes. So we fit there, I think, on both of the most important things in Thailand. On both agenda. We complement we complement the mm. Thai needs uh, in economy. We don't, the good thing about Thai and uh, Israeli economies are that they don't compete with each other, they complement each other. Yes, yes. I For think. example, we don't produce cars, but you do. I see, So we I actually see. buy a lot of cars from, from Thailand. Thailand. My see. Toyota in Israel is actually made in Thailand. Oh really? Yes. I didn't know that. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> so, uh, so it's uh -huh. uh, I, it's two economies that uh -huh. complement each other, and that's that's a good thing for both countries. Yes. As and uh, mm -hmm. I was I, I'm a little bit disappointed that we never uh, managed to uh, complete the free trade agreement. Yes, which, I was going to touch base on that. Which um, I thought is really a basic thing mm. that will enable uh, the mm. two economies to move faster and be stronger. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. But unfortunately, that didn't because, materialize yet, so to maybe speak. Maybe because of like COVID situation mm. and, and so on. Well, next up, um, we like to touch base on tourism. Of course, Thailand is quite big, big in tourism, and also um, in Israel. Israel is regarded as the biblical holy land. Um, you know, with its most sacred sites in Jerusalem, um, which includes the Dome of the Rock shrine, the historic Western Wall, and Al Aqsa. Moss, mm -hmm. and um, the Israel also have where where you were born in uh, Tel Aviv, which is the financial hub, which is known for the beaches there and the ball house architecture. Um, the question is, in addition to these popular cities, maybe you can share a bit on other cities or sites that Thais can visit or mm. you know people watching this can visit. Well, the great thing about Israel is that it's on one hand it's very small, but mm. there are very different kind of regions. Mm. So you have in the in the in the south we have the desert which is very nice right, if right. you like the desert scenery mm. uh, in the north we have the uh, mountains the That's Galilee ranges yes, yes which yes. is very nice if you like the mountain scenery mm -hmm. we have a uh, uh, both in the north and in the middle of the country very good small wineries which oh, yes, uh, tourists it's very really big like there. Yeah. yeah there's a lot oh. of variations when yeah. i was doing research yeah. so uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of choices there mm -hmm. but uh, being born in tel aviv i would advise every thai that goes to israel mm -hmm. usually people skip tel aviv because they want to go to the religious places or, or the, the, the natural I, i strongly suggest for thais to go stay in tel aviv because uh. it's an amazing city it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's The Very beaches, of course, but then there's friend. restaurants and cultural mm. life, and mm. it's uh, somebody once defined it as a New York on the Mediterranean. Ah, I was going to say, what yeah. do you want to compare with yeah. other cities? Oh, it's, so it's a 24 7 city, and crowded, really vibrant. Very loud. vibrant. I see. You know, traffic jams, still mid midnight, <laughs> you still have traffic jams. Maybe not as bad as Bangkok, but. <laughs> so that's my strongest recommendation. Yes. Um, may I just add a little bit onto that? Um, there is also a lot 
which is where oh. the, the Red Sea is. It's a port city. Um, of course, duty free. If you want no bad shopping, then you can visit um, Elat. Good idea. Yeah. Elat. Elat. Yeah. Elat. Elat. Um, and also Haifa. Haifa. Yeah. Haifa, where you said there's a northern part, where the mountains. That's on the northern part. Northern yeah, part, yeah, yeah, and yeah. also there's south. There's a very beautiful Bahai Center there, I which see, is see. one of the really a jewel in the crown of the architecture in, uh, in Israel. Yeah. And also Safed. Sfat, yeah. Sfat, Sfat. Sfat is a very kind of religious old uh, city, old city, which is very interesting. Mm, I see. So next up is on culture. This part is the fun part where we would um, insert the references to audience. So each audience, uh, when they see each country, they just look up. Oh, what are the famous people at that country? Oh, okay. Yeah, and for Israel, um, um, I have several. Like I've been following some singers like okay. um, Idan Rahel. Uh, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah, the legend. Yeah, I, I yeah. myself been following. You like her. his music? Yes, yes, <laughs> I love, yeah. I love. Yeah. So in this topic, feel free to share to your audience maybe your favorite Israeli um, scholars or artists. Musicians, even athletes. So yeah, you can just name them out, and I can add on. Yeah, that's a great question. Mm. I, I mean, if you're talking about authors, definitely the mm. my favorite would be the he's a very famous. He's a Nobel laureate actually. Oh, really? His yeah. name is Shai Agnon. Shai Agnon. And he uh, won the Nobel uh, laureate uh, in literature. Yes. Oh, I see. I, see. Uh, uh, I think about like 30 years ago, something like that. I see. He's, I see. he's dead by now. I see. Uh, but he's really uh, an excellent writer that mm. also has a. His book uses is on the Hebrew language very. Ah, efficiently. Very, in a very interesting way. And, ah. uh, uh, what is the content about, like the? Pacific? Well, he mainly writes about the the life of the Jews in Eastern Europe. Oh, more like the living. And and, and yeah. also about the. The life in Israel in the early 40s. I see, I uh, see. When the country was uh, being formed. Mm. Uh, but the way he writes is really, really very rich mm. in uh, descriptions mm. and in vocabulary. Mm. And uh, really, mm. you really have to concentrate, but it's very. <laughs> because the text is really fruitful. dense, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. I, see, I see. Okay, I, I, I now see, know yeah. what it is. So, so those who are uh, studying Hebrew or wants to, you know, engage. Um, have an engaging experience in reading this text, so feel free to... Um, Shai Agnon. Shai Agnon, yes. Next up, maybe some artists, you know, or singers, or... or uh, well, first of all, you asked about sports, so I have yes. to mention yes, my please. favorite team. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> my favorite team in football, I'm, I'm a big fan of football, so... Uh, uh, is uh, Paul Tel Aviv, which is, of course, okay. one of the two main... Mm -hmm. Uh, sports team in uh, in uh, Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. By the way, we have an Israeli player here in Thailand. I was gonna ask. In if, uh, if... United uh, Buri Ram is uh, playing. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, oh. So his name. Uh, check his, him out. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> I'm still waiting for them to come and play in Bangkok so I can I go see. and watch him. Uh, or oh, I thought you were gonna play with him, but. Okay. I, I wish I could. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. And. Uh, you know, music, there's uh, so many of them, but mm. Idan Reichel, cert certainly, mm. I have all his discs here, and, uh, yes. and uh, I also like very much, he's not Israeli, but he's Jewish, mm. Leonard Cohen, I don't know if you know the name, he's a Jewish Canadian, so very, very known in, uh, in what, Europe and the US. What genre? Like it's like ballad, ballad. Oh, ballad, yeah, ah, I see, I see. Very I see. Mm -hmm. highly recommended to anybody to go on YouTube, just put... Leonard Cohen, and you would uh, you would see some you would hear some amazing music. I see. I want to um, explain on the a little bit on the TV shows mm -hmm. since uh, we like to watch shows here. So yeah. the one that's really big in Israel is Savri Maranan. Savri Maranan. Yeah. Savri Maranan. Yeah. yeah. Savi Baranan is an Israeli sitcom that shows like, you know, typical Israeli family um, and their interactions among family members, which is hilarious. I watched like, really? yeah, two or three episodes like last week. Okay. <laughs> I think it's very similar to our 
Thai okay. yeah, sitcom. So, so yeah, you can um, enjoy that. Um, yeah. So lastly, we are wrapping up on the Q and A session. Yeah. So that is for this week for Meet the Ambassador. Um, thank you for watching and thank you, Your Excellency, for joining us. Um, yes. Yeah, stay tuned for next week and see you. สวัสดีค่ะ YES Media